Praise the Lord, everybody. Is he worthy to be praised? Church, is he worthy to be praised? We serve an awesome God, amen? Stuart, how are you doing? Let me tell you something. It's, it's definitely a privilege. I'm looking at Facebook, and Facebook is going crazy with my generation. The, the, the words that's going out and is, is, Paul, you're really, really up there? <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm really excited about being here. You know, when some people say, oh, you know, I'm mean, such a privilege. Yo, I'm excited about being here. And it's good to be here. I've learned so much about you and how God can do so much with your life. And for me to be here to speak with you is a privilege beyond compare. Now, I just want to let you know that I'm moving a little slow because I went to eat at somebody's house today. Um, I went to eat at uh, Jason Thomas's house, Carmen Hope, take Jason Thomas, well, J Car they made some, they, you know, they texted me, man, they said, are you vegetarian? I said, I said, not today. <laughs> when I went to the house, they was in the back of the house, I'm talking about, a, from f those who are from Brooklyn, right, when you're on church, at wow. Uh, let me be careful, you know, because if I said Jamaica, y'all would be like, boop, 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 nigga. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, in Brooklyn, man, they got these big pans on the corner, like in Church Avenue, and they'd be cooking jerk chicken right in the street. So I go in the back of the house, and I'm smelling, the, I'm smelling this, I feel like I'm in the country. I'm following my nose, and I see this big pan back there. My man is like, like, a, like you know, for real, right? Jamaicans, they don't just cut chicken like, they, they, you know, they, they got culinary. They, you have to step like this and, you know, and I'm gonna cut the chicken and turn the chicken and cut it and turn it, you know. Yeah. The joint was good, it was good, it was good. So I brought back some, you know, I brought back some to share with all of you. We just need someone spiritual enough to touch it. So everyone can get some. But I wanna thank them and, um, just been having a great time. Elder pa Paula, thank you for the opportunity of being here. But let's talk a little bit, is that all right? On Wednesday, we had the opportunity of starting from uh, Judges chapter 13. And in Judges chapter 13, we realized in Judges chapter 13 that we found ourselves in the book. Is that all right? We saw, we saw ourselves in the book. And when we talk about seeing ourselves in the book, we, we realize that there's no one that's here right now that is here for no reason. Oh boy. Amen. It's important to understand that there's no one here for no reason. Everyone is here for a reason. I don't care what you think about yourself, God thinks bigger for you. And I've heard uh, guys talk about girls like they're dogs and they don't realize that God is trying to use you as men to be instrumental to make sure that women are lifted. And I'm excited when I see men still lifting up their women instead of pushing them down. We still have good men. But I've realized that, just a quick uh, caption, that Manoah is the kind of man that entreats God. Just stay with me. He entreats God, and because he entreats God, he knows that the child that he's about to have is going to be a Nazarite called out called out which means which means that if you're going to be a christian if you say you are a christian we ain't pray yet if you are a christian you are called out you're not like everybody else you don't look like everybody else you don't walk like everybody else it bothers me when you come from really when you come from way upstate and you say you're from new york and you're walking like this and nobody walk like that in brooklyn no more everybody in brooklyn's white So please, if you haven't lived that life, you know, ladies, you don't want a guy that walks like this, you know, you know, with his pants all the way to the bottom. Because on your wedding day, you want a brother with his pants down here talking about, I'm coming to get you, baby, I'm coming. It's just niggerish. Niggerish is a word. So for those who are dating and you're carrying on like that, you don't want somebody like that for life. If you want a high school boy, then go back to high school for that kind of boy. We generate men here. 
And if you're not that kind of man, then you're not generating the spirit in your life. And so when I look at this, I've realized that God wants us to be different kind of individuals. That means, that means, I'm just telling you straight, just before we get into this, that number one, that when you're a Christian, you dress like a Christian. It doesn't say you got to put on rainbow colors and act like you nerdy, you know what I mean? But to be a Christian is, is I, I got to tell you right now, for my three years in ministry at the church that, I, that I'm at right now, I, I was dressing and my, my jackets would come down to here, my shirts would be too big, and then we hired this youth pastor, this young pastor. Man, we hired this young pastor. Brother came to me, he was like, Pastor, can I talk to you? You know, because senior pastors kind of have this little, you know, little chip, you know, you know, don't tell me what to do, you know what I mean? This young cat came to me, he was like, yo, can I, can I interest you in Express? I said, I don't wear clothes like that. I'm very conservative. I'm very conservative. He said, please, let me just interest you in like, let me just get you a shirt. Man, I put this shirt on, right? And my wife was like, yo, I really like that. And she started, she was like, I really like that. You know? <laughs> started touching, you know, just touching me differently. Man, I went out and I started buying all kinds of shirts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coming in the house like, hey, for real, honey, I just bought a new shirt. You know, it's a new shirt. <laughs> But I realized even in our dress, even in our deportment, man, we got to be Christians. And it's okay to be a Christian. I'm going to say it again. It's all right to be a Christian, man. It's okay. And even though when I was at your, when I was your age, I didn't feel that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if I, can, if I can reverse the time, I would do things differently. I, I mean, I wouldn't, no one, I wouldn't even be kissing nobody. I don't know what's on your mouth. I probably wouldn't even eat from you in the cab. I wouldn't shake your hand, I don't even know what's on it. I'd be walking around with little hand sanitizers. Because the fact of the matter is, I probably more likely would have done things differently. And so God is sending me to you with a message. And that message simply is that at the end of the day, I don't want to be caught blind and naked. Can we talk? Father, again, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be with us and bless us, that as we go into the second installation of this small series, that you will help us to realize that we were born to deliver, that your Holy Spirit was given to us for the reason that we may edify the church and others through our lives. So I'm asking now that you bless us and be with us, and as I speak, don't let it be me speaking, let it be your Holy Spirit speaking through me. In Jesus' name, let everyone say, amen. Now, I want to tell you this right now. There's some, listen, bro, who, who, it's my man on the, um, on the, on the, the that's, y'all have a Hammond in here. When, when I was going here, there was nothing called a Hammond up in here. It was, it was considered a, um, a different instrument. But that's a crazy instrument right there. That's, it, it's crazy. I heard what you did with it. Like, I heard you do that. And it's nice. I like it. Y'all even got a drum set in here. <sighs> Let me tell y'all a story real quick, and I'm done. I'm done. Because my wife texted me. She said, please, just tell the stories. I remember Mosley. Some of these, some of these, this guy's name is something that you just read about or heard about. I remember one day, man, this guy finished preaching in church, right? No, no, this girl finished singing in church. And folks got up and started clapping. I mean, really clapping. I mean, you know, Tim, do you, you, you remember anything? Just clapping. When everything settled down, my man got up. Mosley walked like this. He was... This is not an arena. This is where the, the Lord resides. And I felt like I was going to hell for clapping. <laughs> and now I'm telling you, and right now what y'all doing, boy, is really praise. All right. And I'm excited about it. It took y'all a long time to get there. And, and really, it's really exciting. It's, it's, it's really exciting. Y'all move from kissing to touching. All right, here we go. Here it is now. Don't, don't worry about it. The Bible tells us in Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter what, everybody? Come on, take, stay with me. Those who are in the up, stay with me. Judges chapter 14. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says, then Samson, Samson saw a woman in Timnath. 
He did what everybody? So y'all gotta stay with me. He saw a woman in Timnath, and the Bible tells us that he went down to Timnath and saw a woman of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, now I want you to understand because if you don't get this text, you're not gonna get the whole thing from here till tomorrow. The Bible tells us that he sees a woman in Timothy. First of all, he goes down, then he sees. We understand Samson has two problems in life. He don't know where he's going and he can't control his eyes. We're realizing that he has an eye problem. Like many men today, come on now. Men, we have eye problems. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, I'm not afraid to say it. I was born with eyes that work. But I gotta admit it, the thing is, women know our eyes work, so you dress for my eyes. Sometimes I just wanna be like, can you help me? Can you help me? Well, I dress like this because I just wanna leave the house. Some of y'all, some of y'all be saying, I dress like this, this is for me. It ain't for you. If it was for you, you stay in the mirror all day and look at you. Try to fool me with your intellect that I, I dressed for me today. I don't even dress for me. Because we go down, we see, and we allow what we see to control what we do. And I'm not scared to say it when I'm driving down the street. I know what I see. I know what I behold. I know how I'm changed. And the Bible tells us, listen, and the Bible tells us that he came up, remember now, he went down, down is trouble, and he came up to his father's house, y'all gotta stay there now. And he says, listen, and he says, I've seen a woman of Timothy and the daughters of the Philistines, now get her for me to wife, get her for me, daddy. And he says, you're telling me there's no one in Oakwood? I mean, there's no one? There is no one among your brethren, there's no one among the sisters that you can get. You have to leave here to go outside to get something. Now I want you to understand that the mentality of the Philistines is here too. I mean, I want, I want you to understand that now, there was a time when we used to say, we're not going out there. Out there is where there's hell. Man, I, man, I ain't messing around with nobody outside. I mean, my parents used to tell me, you got to stay with the young lady in the church. I jacked up in the church, not outside of the church. So I'm not talking about the Philistines. I'm talking about your philistinical behavior. I can make up words. I got a master. And the Bible tells us that he says to his dad, I'm going to paraphrase because of time, but because we know the story, I want you to stay with me and go back and look at it. The Bible simply says that he goes to his father. He says, Daddy, get her for me to wife. Why? Because she pleaseth me well. And gentlemen, we said it last night that pleasing me well has nothing to do with Bible study. She pleaseth me well. And I want you to know that this pleasing had to do with sexual activity simply because later on you'll come to find out that the reason, listen, the reason why he is so messed up in his mind because he can't get his when he wanted. I'm going to show you how messed up he is. The Word of God tells us, listen, the Word of God tells us as we move forward and then back that he gets so crazy, Kim, he gets so crazy in his mind that this dude, this dude goes and finds 300 foxes and catches them. Think about that. I mean, just think about it. No, 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 let your mind think, because sometimes when we read the Bible, we don't read it deep enough. We said, and Samson caught 300 foxes and tied their tails together. You crazy. Just think that I leave, the, I leave Wade Hall, I leave Edwards Hall, I go into the field. Because my girl didn't want to be with me, come on, think of it, my girl didn't want to be with me, so I'm going to now walk into the field and find some squirrels. And when I find them, I'm going to take their tails and tie it together on brands and let them go into the field. You're nuts! And anyone in a bad relationship without God will go nuts. I remember one time, man, this girl wouldn't open up the door for me. I was dating this girl for six years. Six. How many? Six. Nine Adventists, and I was a pastor. And I'm going to tell you right now, I knocked on the door, she wouldn't open the door. Knocked on the door, she wouldn't open the door. And I listened, I thought I heard a dude inside. I 
I nearly lost my mind. Now, listen, the way I think now is if I'm dating a girl, right? If I'm dating a girl and she want to be with another dude, bounce. The statistics are crazy. For every one of me, there's seven of y'all. So if a girl be like, I don't want to be with you, Paul, you short. I'd be like, good, go. Bless me. There should be nobody in this room crying for somebody else. Anytime a guy look at you and be like, yo, honey, I don't want to be with you no more. I got something else. Look at him, look at him like Samson, you crazy nigga. Go into the fields and pick squirrels. Where the word of God is telling us, well, the word of God is telling us that he says, daddy, get her for me because she pleased me well. And when he says, listen, and when he says she pleased me well, he pleased me well, he then goes and he begins to have a party because the word of God says that he goes, he, he's, his mother and father goes down to Timnath. They leave from up and go down. How many times you've been in a worship service and you've been up and when you left, you went down? It's going to happen tonight. Statistics show that after this, you're going to be blessed, but when you walk out of here, you're going to forget. Come on, I mean, come on. We've been doing this for years. You go to AY, a special speaker comes in, he touches you through the Holy Spirit, and right after that, the devil is right at the end of the door right there. Because you're, you're, you've been moved by emotion and not by decision. And the word of God tells us, come on, the word of God tells us now that he puts forth a riddle. Listen, because Samson is a man of riddles. He's a man of riddles. So he puts forth a riddle. Where does he get the riddle from? Y'all better stay with me now. The word of God says, and please read it for yourselves. The word of God says that while he is going, while he is going to, do, to a place where he's not supposed to go, a young lion roars against him. What are you doing here? When did you move here? When did you get here? When did you get here? When did you move here? When did you get, I'm talking to you. Three months ago, I haven't seen you in church in three months. You haven't been in church in three months? Shame on me. Let me see her. Come here, baby. Hey. How are you? You, um, you moved here three, uh, let me see you after church. I didn't even know my own member was here. You let me know if you need something. Bad pastor, bad pastor. Wow. And so the word of God tells us, hold on, the word of God, no, I, I feel bad, I'm telling you. How are you gonna be here three months? I didn't see, okay, okay, let's move on. See you after church. And so, the, listen, so a young lion roars against him. The, listen, in, 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 in the original language, come on, the original language tells us that it's not just a young lion, but a strong lion. How many times you left campus to go somewhere you're not supposed to go and got there safely? You couldn't even say thank God. You can't pray before you go to where you're not supposed to go. You go uh, we going to a club, y'all, y'all jump in the car and say, now Lord, take us there safely. Really? <laughs> You can't even pray your way there. Some chick calls you, hey, why don't you come over to the house? Come on, come on, I can't go, okay, okay. You get in the car, you start driving. And as soon as you're driving, a, 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 a car just miss you. You turn around and go back. If I'm walking down the street about to get mine, about to get some mine. And I'm going across the street and a car just missed me. I'm gonna be like, where? <laughs> God to tell me twice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, if, we, but our younger minds, I'm not, not mine, I'm a little older now, my, my young mind, you know, a car with you, you're going somewhere you're not supposed to go. You know the Holy Spirit ain't leading you and the car just missed you. You're gonna be like, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Samson is going, come on now, stay with me. Samson is going, pastor, and while he's going, a young lion roars against him. And the Bible says, listen, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord moved on him at that time. How can the spirit move on us while we're still in sin? 
drives me crazy. It's like spiritual weed. You don't even know if you're high or not. The Bible is telling us that he's about to do evil. He is sitting in his mind, in his heart, and in his movement. And yet the Holy Spirit moves on him. Why? Because in chapter 30, it says before he was born, he was born to deliver, and God's word has to come true whether you're being obedient or not. The word of God tells us that he rents the lion in, in pieces. Then when he goes back, come on, then when he goes back, he sees that there is honey inside of the carcass. Bunch of bees probably was up in it. I mean, I'm just telling you, there was honey in the carcass. Now, for those who feel that there's nothing that can come out of your dead spiritual life, that if sweetness can come out of something dead, then what about your life? That's the kind of God I serve. The kind of God that I serve that when people leave you like a dead carcass because of your sins, God comes by and puts honey in your situation. Come on, man. What, a kind, what kind of God we serve? And the Bible then says, stay with me, y'all. The Bible then says that he goes back and he puts out a riddle. He, he's in, in his riddle, listen, in his riddle, he's basically saying in his riddle, whatever, what came out of something strong filled the belly of, some, of, of someone. He gives that riddle, verse 17 and 16, 16 and 17, listen closely. Just because of the interest of time, I'm putting this here. His wife at this time is supposed to be on his side. But when you marry outside of your belief system, who's stronger? Come here. I mean, please come here. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I mean, telling the men have respect, please come here. Let me see, you have grip on your shoes? Okay, good. Now, let's, let's, you go up. Now, I met you at, okay, wait, 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 sister, come back down. Don't go all the way up there. Right there, right there, right there. Good, good, good. Good. <laughs> now, let's just say that I met her at the local Burger King. Uh -huh. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We met at the Burger King. That's where I saw her. It's better than at the club. And I meet you, you meet me, you think I'm fine. <laughs> so now, she's telling me she is, she is not a believer. Are you with me? And I'm a believer. But I know because I'm so influential that I'm going to bring you to my belief. You think where I'm coming from? Okay. And so, here it is now that, no, go down there. I, me I, I messed up. <laughs> okay. That because I'm the believer and you're not, I'm going to pull you to where I am. You with me? All right. So now you're the unbeliever. I'm the believer. And I'm going to, I believe I can pull you up here. You ready? Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to pull me. You're going to pull me there. I'm going to pull you here. Is that okay? All right. All right, let's go. Ready? Go, go, go. Pull. Wait, 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 wait. You got to prove nothing. We know you're strong. Just, come on, come again. Come on. I'm going to pull you up. Why you got to brace yourself like that? You already have the advantage, you're on the bottom. You missed that. You missed it. You ready? What's your name, what's your name? Shauna. Shauna, Shauna where are you from? New York. You really from New York? Yeah. Uh, stop, 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 stop. I wouldn't have picked you if I knew you were from New York. Understand, Shauna, one more time, one more time, because I gotta hurry up, one more time. Do you realize, come on, let's pull, pull now, pull. All right, pull, come on, pull, okay, all right, all right, all right. Go sit down, for real, sit down. <laughs> do you realize that when you are on top, it's harder to bring somebody on top? It's easier to bring you down. You, do you hear that? It's easier to bring you down. So what happens with, listen, what happens with her right now is that she's able to bring me down. Watch this. I don't care if y'all don't like this or not. Write me later. She's, it's easier for her to bring me down to her level. 
and her level is really Satan's level. So, so right now, they're not equally yoked. And just because you pay tuition at this school and you're male and female doesn't mean that you're equally yoked. She cries over her man and says to her man, I need to find out the riddle. And gentlemen, I want you to know something right now that no one is supposed to know the secrets. I want to know where your strength lies. No woman should know the str where your strength lies because they'll know your weakness. Imagine that everyone you date, you tell them your weakness. They'll take advantage of you. Ladies, don't tell nobody your weakness. Don't show it, don't walk it, don't show it, don't walk it. At the end of the day, nobody wants to know what size you wear. Dress like a Muslim, will you? I ain't scared of y'all. There's less rape in the eastern part of the world in the Maghreb region than in this region. Why? Because the eyes are the windows to the soul. You look at the Muslims today, they're covered from here and here and all the way down. You can't rape what you can't see. Some of y'all don't like that. When I, was your, when I was here, I liked the women dressing up Saturday night. Dress up Saturday night like y'all fine women pack 11 in a car. Yes, 11. Spandex, tight clothes, breasts hanging out, in a car, every time a bump, there's a bump, everybody's... I mean, we're packing up to go to hell. And when I'm reading, when I read this text, listen, when I read this text, it's helped me to understand, let me get back there, it helps me to understand that the word is telling me, listen, the word is telling me that she cries over him, the word of God says seven days, don't move when I say this, listen, and understand this, that if seven days pass at the time when he was doing feasts at the Philistines area, that means he missed the Sabbath. Your downfall in this school is when you miss your Sabbaths. The downfall is when you think you got it so you're staying in your bed. I used to sleep in my bed on Saturdays because I felt the church had nothing for me. And I always say this time after time again, that once you begin to compromise with God, you compromise the commandments of God. Can, can, can I just give you that example? Number one, Samson, first of all, compromised the Sabbath. He spent seven days somewhere he shouldn't have been. Seven days, listen, seven days, seven days a Sabbath passed and he was still in the wrong place. You ever been in the wrong place on a Sabbath? You don't feel, you don't feel funny? You know, you know you got a problem with the spirit, right? When you could be... You, you could... You could... You could, you could, you could you, could, um, you can't even listen to, um, when you're doing dirt on Sabbath, you gotta feel bad. You don't feel bad? Can you imagine, can you imagine doing something on the Sabbath you shouldn't be doing? And, and you just, and the Lord says, is the, can you imagine you, you hugging up in the corner with some boy and you hear, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you right now what I even liked about school here. There's something crazy about Adventist young people. We're crazy. Because we ain't going to party on no Friday. No, sir. No, no, no. We'll cuss on Friday, but we ain't partying. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Saturday night, we're going to party. But Friday too holy. At least the Holy Spirit's still working with you. Come on, you don't see people go, we're going to this party on Friday. You got to be crazy, honey. Wait till tomorrow night. <laughs> Word of God tells us that she cries over him. And the reason why I'm saying this is because tomorrow you're going to see that if you don't fix your problem now, 20 years, you're still going to have it. She cries over him. God gives Samson a microcosm of, listen, of what's going to happen in 20 years with Delilah, with this girl. Wow. 
She's crying over him for seven days, telling him, you don't love me, you don't love me. How many times you hear that? You don't love me, you don't love me. If you don't, you don't love me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, love is a funny word. I dare you to tell the person that if you really love me, you don't want to have sex with me. Then they, then they walk away and you ain't love me. God is going to hook it up at the right time. Are you with me? God's going to... God is going to allow that to happen at the right time. Nah, y'all don't like that. You want, you want to hear something else? Well, look, come on. Uh, are you married? Okay, you kind of sitting close, but come here. Come here. Um, okay, you shouldn't have done that. Come here. Y'all better keep your face still. If you're laughing, I'm going to get you. Okay? Brother, would you come up? Good, good, good. Look, since I know your mama, come on, come on. How old are you? Good, come on now. Oh, come on, let's see, anybody gonna steal nothing? We had Oakwood, put this on. Teeth, all right. Look at her, look at her, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me. Come on, let's go, you shouldn't have looked at me. Now listen, I've been hearing, listen, I've been hearing there's a lot of um, people who are gay on campus. Okay, please, please, no, 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 please, please. It's fine, they, they're sinners just like you. In fact, they may be in a better position than you. They may know that they're gay and they're working on it and you know you are a sex crazed fool smoking weed in the corner and you ain't doing nothing about it. It doesn't concern me. It doesn't bother me when people say, do you know that Oakwood have outwardly gay people walking around? I said, man, I've been walking, when I was at Oakwood there was outwardly sex crazy Negroes walking around. It's the same hell. So gay people don't scare me. It's people like, it's other people scare me. No, I'm serious. Gay people don't scare me. Hip hypocrites scare me. I'm serious. Hypocrites scare me. The, listen, pastors who don't understand people scare me. That's scary. You want to know what's scary? A cute girl. <laughs> I can't remember my wife is watching. That's what scares me. All right, here we go. <laughs> one, two, no, but hold on a second. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, uh. Come on, come on. She, Kim told me to pull you out. So you better. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how school is. Let me tell you how life is, all right? You come to school. What's your name again? Aaron. Aaron. Should I do, do, do's arm? Man, let me tell you, if I can get arms like that and go home, oh boy, I'll be the man. <laughs> I'll be the man, dog. So you come to school. You're a theo major? You, you, are you? Yeah. Okay, good. You're a theo major. And then, come on, bro. And you come to school for the first time and you meet, what's your name? Leandra. Leandra. You meet Leandra. Do you know him? You don't? Yo, this is um, Aaron. This is... Leandra. Now remember now, even though you're a theology major, you've been having sex with a whole bunch of people. On a level from one to seven, you're on six, bro. Wow. Yeah. He's not the man. But he meets you and you're on level two because you've only been with like two guys. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. 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 Boy, you're, you're shivering. Look at your mouth. You're shivering. Okay, good. All right? Good. And then you guys get together. You meet the first week of school and y'all mess around. You are on level six. You're on level what? Good. Then you come to school. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. Good, Brandon. Brandon comes over here and he meets Chanel. She from she from the Virgin Islands. Do you know she from the Virgin Islands? I know that. Oh boy, she's from the Virgin Islands. Where you from? Atlanta. She's from Atlanta. Do you know there's a plane? There's a plane. Uh, watch it. Watch it now. Dirty South. Okay. <laughs> you know there's a there's a plane that goes to from Atlanta right to St. Thomas. Do you know that? I know that. You know that? Mm -hmm. He knows that. So you guys meet, and when you meet, you have never had sex before. You are a virgin. Look at them hypocrites out there. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> I'll check him later. <laughs> okay? And then you guys meet. You're a virgin, right? And she's on level five. She's on level five. Don't let your father hear that, but she's on level five. Okay? But you get together, and it's cool. You know, it's cool. But understand this. 
that you then come to school and you meet, what's your name? Haley. Haley. You meet Haley and you are on, le you're on level zero. You are also a virgin. You, but you had, you on, you, you know, you on seven, girl. You've been there. Then I, hey, no, 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 no. Hypothetically speaking, she's just some of you. Okay? All right. So here it is now. So what happens now is that she's saying she wants to have sex with you. You're saying, no, I'm going to stay true to my God. And because you're staying true to my, your God, she leaves you and gets with a man right here because all the girls are talking about you. And when, since you're all together, you say, I'm not taking none of that stuff. I'm going, I'm leaving you and I'm going to check this guy out who doesn't want to do anything because I don't, I don't even like the fact I'm on level two. But then you say, listen closely, then you say, hold on a second, hold on a second. If she left him and I'm, everybody's talking about him and I'm a virgin, I got to get mine before everybody talk about me. So then you get with her. Are you with me? And then you're all together. Are you with me? You're all together. You're doing your thing. Listen closely. And then you then get upset because you can't hold to this because she's hurting your heart. She hurts your heart. You're not going to let no girl hurt your heart anymore. You're going to be this dog. So you now leave and you get with her, hypothetically speaking. And then you leave her because she's on a lower level than you and you get with her because she's on seven because she's on your level. And then you leave, come on now, you, and don't get rid of her hand because this is a threesome right here, all right? Good. I want you to sit. I want you to sit. I want you to sit. And I want you to sit. I'm going to ask you a question, okay? Uh, are you gay? It's okay. Good, good, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> are you gay, brother? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> but they all slept together. When, when dudes are in, we talked about this, like, when dudes are in a room talking about, I slept with this girl, and the other one's like, yo, man, I slept with her too, and y'all over there like, yeah, you, you gay. <laughs> Sit down, guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Not that, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, remember now, I'm not talking about gay people. Get, let me get it straight. I'm not talking about gay people or that condition. So don't be like, oh, that pastor is talking about, I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is, when you don't know your condition, the devil will make a condition for you. The Bible is clear. Stay with me. The Bible is clear at this point now that he is so upset now that he then leaves because he loses the bet. The bet is I will give you 30 sheets of, of garment. I will give you 30 clothing. I will give you 30 of so-and-so. He's with these 30 companions. Now he owes them money because she told the men the secret, come on, of his success. The Bible says he now breaks another commandment. He goes into town and he kills 30 people, then breaks another commandment and steals their clothes. Come on now. You don't even realize the downward spiral you're getting into when you don't know if you've been delivered or if you're a deliverer. Sometimes you don't even know you're sitting because you're on automatic pilot. You can't get me to sin. I am sin. I don't need to get it together because my boy next to me ain't got it together. This guy ain't got it together. The pastor doesn't have it together. I don't need to have it together. And the word of God now tells us that he loses his mind, goes out and kills folk. Then the word of God says he goes up, come on now, to his parents' house, which means now he's in a place of safety. You need to stay with me now. The word of God tells us, stay with me, the word of God tells us that he goes back because a certain time passes and he goes back because he now wants to be with his girl again. And the Bible tells us that his best friend was given to his wife. <clears throat> now I want you to be clear, I want to be clear about something, what this word says. He says to the men, if you had not plowed with my heifer, that's what the text says. If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would have never known the answer. Can you imagine if I walked up in my wife's house, not mine, my wife, and called her a heifer? 
I'm in Huntsville, my wife is in Maryland. Can you imagine if she says something I ain't like and I say, hmm, really, Heffa? She'd be like, oh, Heffa? Okay. I walk into my house, be like, honey, can we get, oh, no, 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 Heffa ain't giving you none. <laughs> Don't talk to Heffa today. It shows his relationship he had with her. Ladies, you should know what kind of relationship people have with you. Because they hold your hand doesn't mean they're holding your heart. <clears throat> Can I give you a real quick commercial? This is when you know what marriage is all about. If, if I marry you, if I marry you, I ain't gonna marry you, I'm married, okay? If I marry you, I have to be willing that if you kill someone, listen, if you kill someone and you are on death row, as a husband, I should be able to go to the courts and say to the courts, I'll take her penalty. Because if I love my wife like Christ loves the church, you take the penalty. Can you imagine if someone, Uncle Jackie, takes your penalty, Uncle Jackie? Someone takes your penalty? That means, that means, listen, that means I remember when we were in school. Stay with me, y'all. When we were in school and you didn't do your homework when I was growing up, you got a beating in school for that. I ain't grew up the way some of y'all grew up. You don't get your homework. There's, I'm going to call your parents. <laughs> no, no. When I grew up in New York, my, they used to take the belt off, line up the students who didn't do their homework, and just pow, 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 next. And you imagine someone said, I remember there was a girl I liked in school, this little girl I liked in school, she was a little girl, and I said, you know, I'll take her penalty, I'll take her penalty, but I would have never done that again. <laughs> take a woman's penalty. No, I don't like your that much, no. And then the Bible tells us that, listen, the Bible tells us that he retreats. I want you to hold it right there for a second. I just told you the story of the fact that Samson then, listen, Samson then goes back to his wife's house to be with her because he's on pleasing mode. He's not converted. Most of us are not converted. We are traditionalists. Come on, y'all. You know you're not converted. But what I realize about God, God is so deep, y'all. God is so deep that, that in your journey to be complete, God, listen, God celebrates the time that you're in your completeness. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you like porn. Let's say you like porn. And let's say you like weed. Let's say you like porn and weed. <laughs> And you say to God, today, I'm not doing it anymore. I want you to hear me, please. I want you to hear me. Don't sleep. I want you to hear me. Today, I'm not doing it anymore. You heard a good sermon. You heard a good song, but the Holy Spirit moved on you and he said, today, I'm not doing it anymore. And you went five days and you messed up after five days. I'm begging you. Don't be discouraged. Think about what God was thinking about you during the five days. Every day that passed, he was like to Satan, hoo And Satan would say, I got him the next day. And he says, he went through two days. He went through three days. He went through, God is celebrating every day of your victory. And you're bummed out about a fifth day? God ain't saving you or losing you on the fifth day. He's looking at your trend. They don't teach you that in theology school. We were taught that once you mess up, you going to hell. Man, I'm going to get some letters. It ain't true. Where is it? Where? Put this camera on right here. It ain't true. You telling me, you telling me that I'm struggling day after 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 day and right here I jack up right here I mess up right here the devil says see and Jesus says yeah see what Come on. Come on. 
And some of you are going to write me and say, but what about Moses? Moses had, didn't have a problem. He had a problem at the last minute. He messed up one time. And let me tell you what Moses did. Moses took a rod that you're supposed to strike one time that represented Christ. And he took it and in his anger, he banged that bad boy, bang, and he banged it again, which said that he's not supposed to die twice, but once. He almost jacked up prophecy. So don't, don't use Moses as an example. You got to use people like Paul who says, every time I try to do right, evil presents itself. The greatest evangelist in the word of God says, I'm the chief of sinners. And so today, I'm just saying, let's say I'm 23 days sober. From whatever your situation is, God is celebrating you. He's celebrating you. And check it, if you make it in your mind tonight not to go back to your foolishness, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But from tonight till tomorrow, he's celebrating you. So the word of God takes us, tells us, listen, the word of God tells us that at this point in time, listen, he couldn't be with her. So what he does is he finds the foxes now. Come on. He finds the foxes now. I want you to understand, hold this for me, that he, he, whenever you're in a wrong relationship, you will lose your mind. I told you I was knocking on this girl's door. Then when I was telling you, knocking on this girl's door. I'm knocking on this girl's door. I thought I heard a brother inside. I started kicking the door. This little man started kicking a steel door. <laughs> You know you crazy, you can't get through a, a dead boat and you're sitting there kicking the door, Gaga! Mm, Gaga! Mm, Gaga! I was hurting myself. I was hurting myself going against... I'm in pain, but I'm, I'm good. And then she finally opened the door, ain't nobody inside there. I thought I heard somebody. I thought I heard somebody. You think a lot of things without God. You think you're cute without God. There's some cute girls that's ugly! There's some good looking men. I'm talking about tall, buff, ugly. <laughs> One of the biggest problems is that you believe your own press. God is not in, listen, God is not impressed with what you look like. He's not impressed with your clothing. He's impressed with your character. And so listen, listen, I'm going to land this plane so we can get, so we can land this tomorrow. The Bible clearly says, listen, the Bible clearly says that at this point in time, things were done for a reason. Where is, where is Pastor Bushner? Is Pastor Bushner here right now? Very quickly, are you here, Pastor? Did he just walk out? Okay, he was just telling a story from 1 Samuel chapter 5. He was just telling a story over there in 1 Samuel chapter 5. I want y'all to hear this. The Word of God says in Judges chapter 13 that before he was born, he had a prophetic life, which means he would begin to deliver the hands out of the, he would begin to deliver them out of the hands of the Philistines. Are you with me so far? Even in his stupidity, the Word of God says, come man, we're about to celebrate up in here. The Word of God says that he comes back to his wife's house about the time of the wheat harvest. Do you see that in chapter 15? In chapter 15, at the time of the wheat harvest, he comes back. This is the time when all of the Philistines come together and thank Dagon for all of the wheat that they have given. God is upset when he woke you up and you didn't pray. God is upset when you can pick up your cell phone, right? And call that dude every single minute and you ain't say hi to him yet. God is upset. Listen, God is upset when you place other things in front of him. Even your schoolwork. Don't, don't even study on Friday. Don't study on Friday. I hope your brain ooze if you study on Friday. Because you can study for a test but not have devotion? Yeah, but I paid for my school. Yeah, but God paid for your life. The Bible becomes clearer. It becomes clear. It becomes clear to me. It becomes clear to me that at this very point, listen, at this very point, you find now that, that Samson is at a point now when he is about to do something that's going to change his whole walk. The word of God says that he goes into, he goes and brings a kid. And the word of God says this kid is a burnt offering to Dagon. 
how in the world are you going to bring an offering to someone come on now to someone how are you going to bring an offering to someone who hasn't done anything for you listen closely and 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 yo, yo, listen yo, i like the music but i'm gonna point to you when it's time to come we ain't, we ain't ready because i'm saving some people from from partying tonight it's important to understand that say listen that what he did was god's work and didn't know it they were about to have a big harvest but he took listen he took the foxes and tied their tails together and they ran into the fields and it burnt up the harvest the word of God says in the original language that it didn't only burn up the wheat harvest but it went underground and burnt the shocks also so that next year there would be no harvest wait till tomorrow you find out that while he's in and getting and getting beat listen while he's getting beat while they're doing him in they're saying that they're saying that they got him back for what he did at the harvest he burnt up the harvest so when it was time for their worship they had no offerings come on and he was just mad and did not know that he was doing God's will. You see, in Judges 13, the very last text, it says, these are the stories that shows the Spirit of God moving on Samson's life. And I want you to know that God, can, if God can move on Samson's life in the midst of sin, wow. how can he move on your life? I'm sick and tired of you listening to the devil telling you that you're not good enough to give your hearts to God because of something you did yesterday. You let him know that God did something yesterday that makes me free today. And as I read this story, now it helps me. Listen, now it helps me to understand that it, it, it tells us now that here it is now that he goes back. Listen, this is which where we end. He says now that he goes and he goes up to Judah and he then begins to have a problem with his own people. We're almost done. The word of God says that the people, come on, his Adventist friends came to him and said, you're making us look bad. Man, I remember when my brothers and I decided to move off campus. Yes, we decided to move off campus. And Dean Carter called my parents and said, listen, we will give you a break to keep them on campus. We need to contain them boys. Because if we put them in Huntsville, there's going to be a problem. No, man, I remember one day, I, I remember, I'm, I'm, we're going to, I, I see the time. I remember one day we, <laughs> we were bored and we found the switch to Edwards Hall. Yes, sir, we found the switch that turns off all the lights at Edwards Hall. And it was about the time, I sound like, I sound like the Bible now, and it was about the coming of the time of, mid, of, of finals and people set their clocks. And my brothers and myself decided that if we can but cut the electricity, everybody would be late. <laughs> ah, you're done worse. You done worse. Man, I was walking with my brother on campus today and I saw the presidential cart, the go-kart, the little cart, the, the thing. It took everything out of me not to steal it. Where's my brother? Is he here? I, I, where, is he? Where, where is he? I'm telling you, I said to him, yo, gee, the president's cart is right there. He said, Paul, please, don't, don't. I said, Gary, when was the last time? One time we stole a van from, from the, uh, we need to go to the mall. So we took this van, <laughs> transportation van. Somebody left the keys in the van. My brother said, listen, 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 let's go to the mall. I was like, let's go. So I'm looking at the president, listen, I'm looking at the president's go card. Just came down from seeing President Pollard. He's going, you're all polished. Sir, it was just a pleasure to be in this fine institution. And we went down and said, check out his go card. <laughs> it took everything out of me because being on campus, it took me back 20 years. And Gary said to me, yo, let's take it. <laughs> we did not take it. But those were innocent problems. 
this is really innocent. Who took, he was just coming down, who took it, you know? We're not gonna go to jail. But I'm gonna tell you right now, y'all guys get into some problems that's different from our problems. You guys play Russian roulette with the devil. You play this game with him. And here it is, listen, here it is, that he decides to now be delivered. These men come, listen, these men come and they, and they tie him. They tie him in ropes and they are delivering him into the hands of the Philistines. Oxymoronic. When the prophecy says he will begin to deliver them out of their hands, he's now being delivered by his own people into their hands. And the word of God says that while he's there, please read it for yourself, while he is there, they rush against him. And the spirit of God moves upon him. Listen. And he breaks the ropes, turns around, and finds the jawbone of himself. The most stubborn animal is an ass. For those who come from the old country, Come on now. You can pack as much stuff as you want on top of a donkey. That donkey ain't moving until it's ready to move. It's not like a horse. You nick the horse, the horse is gonna move. The horse would, in fact, a horse, you can lead a horse right over a cliff. You could take a horse anywhere. Just beat it once and it'll go. But a donkey? A donkey would just, and just stop. <laughs> and then move. <laughs> and then just stop. And we'll stop for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you get off the donkey, then it starts moving again. <laughs> Nothing more stubborn. unbelievable the Bible says he sees his character and even listen even that donkey died so he might live he picks up the jawbone of this donkey it says it's new because it was prepared for a fight and as the spirit moves upon him he takes the jawbone and he's Whacking one after the other, one after the other, until he slays a thousand men. He drops this jawbone and he begins to shout, I, I have slain a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. I, until, remember now, he didn't lose he didn't get thirsty because of the swinging. He got thirsty because of his chatting. You see, when God gave him the strength to do that, he's not going to leave him weak. It's when he dropped the jawbone and forgot about God and said, I, he became weak. Did you get it? I will tell you this without reservation, that whenever I am the weakest is when I'm about me. You will always fall when it's about you. When you stop praying, you will always fall. You will always jack up. You will always mess up. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life, you will hear him say, that's not the right one. That's not the right thing. I've got you. I'm holding you. And so the Bible brings us now to the point where he says, God, are you trying to kill me? 
missing. Have you ever been in a place where you ask yourself, why am I in the place that I'm in? Why am I here again? And you should only ask yourself, why did I do this to myself? And still God shows up. Oh, oh. The Bible says that after he finished cussing out God, God gave him water out of the mouth of the jawbone. After God was cussed out by you, you're still breathing. God delivered you yesterday and you don't even know it. God delivered you today and you don't even know it. And all he's asking, all he's asking is that you give him yourself just one more time. I know tomorrow we're going to be talking about blind and naked, but right now, what condition are you in? God is crying out to you right now. Are you crying out to him? So I truly believe, listen, I truly believe that at the end of that text, it says, and Samson judged Israel for 20 years. That's how he got in the book. God hooked him up and brought him back. But the issue is that so many, even though Samson was inside of the church now, he still wasn't converted. He just had a position. And I believe that there's somebody here that's tired of positioning yourselves in the pews, but ready to say, Lord, I'm thirsty right now. I've been swinging. I've been swinging. I've been swinging. I'm tired right now. Any of y'all ever been tired of your sins? Anybody ever hear, ever go back to your room and be like, Dad, gone it. I did it again. Anybody ever here said, There's no hope for me. I'll never change. I want you to know that if God can work his miracles through Samson while he was yet a sinner, what more can he do for you? I believe, I believe, I believe that there's somebody here that needs to understand that you're in process. This time I'm going to close off. I asked his permission. I'm going to ask my older brother if you come here for a second. Don't get upset, man. I asked your permission. Now, some of y'all looking at him, y'all saying, that's a big dude right there. No, that big dude right there, he blew. When we went to school, he was six foot and thin. Uh, where's Thomas? He, he's, oh, he left. He left. My, oh, right here. Remember Gary was thin? This dude used to play ball and dunk and games and all that kind of stuff like that. He couldn't even jump to catch a fly. Right now. Sorry, bro. Okay. <laughs> when we were driving, my mom called me. She said, do you see that G lost weight? I said, yeah, ma. He looked good. Coming, I need you to stay with me. My brother called me. He said, yo, did you see G? Yo, my man lost a lot of weight. I said, yeah, he looked good. He really looked good. But when you see him, you see someone who may be a little heavy. Am I correct? You didn't see him before. While we're driving, man, my man can't even stay up two hours because he's always sleepy. Yo, yo, he's always sleepy. My man took me seven hours straight, eight hours straight here. And I'm looking at him like, why he's so alert like that? Then I'm calling my mom. I'm like, yo, what's going on with this dude? I woke up seven in the morning. My man was gone. He came back. I said, where were you? He said, I was working out. 
Before he went to bed, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? He's like, yo, I'm working out downstairs. Then I called him on the phone. I was like, yo, I'm in a hotel, man. Yo, wh- wh- where are you? I'm walking down Wind Drive. Man, what's wrong with you? He said, man, I'm in process. Come on. I always joke around with his wife, I'm like, yo, man, Gary be snoring, man, he be snoring, because, you know, he be, he be sitting on the belly, he be snoring. But as I'm laying in the bed, man, he's, he's not snoring as much, because, because, listen, because there's a residue of a workout process. You see, when you look at him, you just said, that dude is big, but you didn't see how big he was. You see, some of our problem is, listen, some of our problem is, is that we are here in process and because you didn't get to where you want to get to yet, you think you're the same person you was. So my mom calls me and my brother calls me and I call them and I call my dad and we're all on the phone and we are, listen, we're celebrating his process. Now, He can't, because when he thinks he has arrived, he'll stop. If he keeps, listen, if he if he thinks he's arrived, he'll stop walking. Come on, preacher. If he thinks he's made it, Thomas. If he thinks he's made it, he'll stop eating right. If he thinks he has attained, come on now, he will stop sticking to the regimen that's bringing him closer to, come on, to to his goal. And I'm so glad that you might not be where you want to be yet, but I celebrate your process. Don't cry, go man, don't cry, don't go over there. God celebrates your process. God celebrates your process. He's celebrating your process. Do you know that when he saw Samson the way he was, God was celebrating what he can see in him already. He's celebrating your process. Don't worry about what you did yesterday. Think about where you are now. And right now, when you say right now in your seats, God, I give you my life. All of the angels start celebrating your process. It's better than not starting. So you're looking at me preaching to you. Can I talk? Can I talk? You're looking at me preaching. You don't know where I am. I'm still in process. But I'm celebrating his as he celebrates mine. But I'm not going to celebrate my process. God is saying even while you were yet a sinner, I die for you. Not when you finished your process, while you were in your process. So right now, right now, know that you are a work in progress. You have not attained, but you can. There may be somebody here right now we're not, we're not talking about baptism, y'all. Come, are, are, you, are you understanding what? We ain't talking about baptism. Don't come down here and get baptized. You've been baptized. Go take communion. I'm not trying to be funny. Take communion, man. Go in your prayer closet. Talk to God. But God wanted me to tell you that you're in process. And I close off by saying this. When I was walking down Cunningham Hall, they breaking out the windows. You see that? They're breaking out the windows. Carter, Carter. They're breaking out the windows in Carter Hall. You see how ugly Carter Hall look right now? They jacking it up. But give it time. Give it time. The windows gonna look good. They're gonna give it a facelift. Listen, listen, they're gonna give it a facelift. And when everybody comes back for alumni on the next year, they're going to say, the next year, they're going to say, I know that's where the building was. But, it, but it's different. Somebody invested in the building and now it's new. 
Anybody want to be new right now? Anybody want to be new? Get out of your seats for your prayer, your deliverance prayer. Anybody want to be made new? Anybody, anybody want to be made new? Just come on, man. Don't look to the left or to the right. Don't worry if your friends are getting up, man. You're going to be delivered right now. God will deliver you just like he delivered Samson over and over again. He'll deliver you just like my brother here is in process. He'll deliver you. He will deliver you. Don't get stuck on who you are. Get stuck on who Christ is. Know that God's got you. And I know some people won't get up and it's okay. It's okay some people won't get up because you can be straight. Listen, as you're standing right there, God can hear you. God can talk to you. But don't let this moment pass without you saying, God, celebrate me. Doesn't matter what you've done. Today is the beginning of your process. Oh my goodness. Is there, is, are you ready to be delivered right now? It's not rhetorical. Let the devil hear you say, yeah. Are you ready to be delivered right now? Woo, he's so ready. So for those who may think, for those who may think, listen, for those who may think you have your way gone past the limit of God, you're not. I'm going to do some crazy right now. Listen, I'm going to do some crazy right now. I'm going to ask you by way of the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen. Don't let this pre the preacher can't do nothing for you. Listen, listen. You say in your heart, Lord, listen, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Say it in your heart, Lord, forgive me of my sins and start me new. Can you do that for God right now? You don't, don't say it out loud. Say it in your heart. God can hear your heart. When you're finished, just put your hands up. When you're finished saying that to God, put your hands up. Okay, okay, okay. Now watch this. Turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Are you ready? Watch this. Turn this place into a house of prayer. Now, don't let the preacher pray for you. Be accountable for the person you're next to and pray for that individual. You ask God to help them in their process. Even if you're standing next to the person that messed up your process, pray for that person. Just do it right now. Do it right now. Pray with the person. Let God hear you. Let, let God hear you. Pray for the person next to you. It's okay. God can hear all of our prayers at the same time. Thomas, pray for your wife where you're sitting green. Pray for that young lady where you're standing next to Tim. Pray for you and your wife where you are. Pray for the person. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the person next to you. This is not the time to be cheap in your relationship. Yes. Hallelujah. Deliver us, O oh Lord. Deliver us from ourselves. Deliver us from ourselves. For those who may be watching online, God can deliver you too. How many people are delivered right now? How many people are delivered right now? How many people are delivered right now? I didn't ask you if you feel delivered. Feelings go away. How many people are sure right now? Come on now. Father God, we come before you thanking you for being an awesome God to us. Father God, we want to thank you for being a great God to us. Tonight we have come to understand that there is no God like you. You saw us in our mess and you still took us to yourself. The young lion roared against us, yet the Holy Spirit took us out of danger. We've been messed up over and over in relationship, yet you broke us apart to save us. 
We've been in our own sin and we couldn't even see what was wrong, yet you love us. So we stand before you already people saying to you, Lord, thank you for celebrating my process. But we promise to give you the praise. Take away our feelings of this world and our love of this world and give us a love for you. Because we believe that one day you're going to burst the clouds. One day the dead is going to rise. One day we're going to be caught up to meet you in the air and I ain't missing that for nothing at all. And so if you repeat after me, please, if you repeat after me, dear Jesus, it's me again. Thank you for hearing and answering my prayer and keep celebrating me in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. 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 Folks, you are, you are dismissed. Um, they told me to tell you, you're dismissed. But when you go, listen, when you go, why don't you share something with them, share a word with someone. Let the campus look like it looked like years ago when you're just stopping and praying with somebody on campus today. Let this place be that oasis where you're telling someone tonight what he talked about. Let's read it in this word tonight. Is that all right? Check it for yourself and be celebrated. God bless you guys. God bless you. I'm going to Edwards. Oh, uh, for the men at 10.30, I'm supposed to be meeting the gentleman at 10.30 at Edwards Hall, I believe. So I'll be meeting you there at 10.30. The gentleman, I don't know if ladies are, are supposed to be there or women also, but I'll be there at 10.30 to speak, to speak that. Uh, okay, it's Bell Tower, you can go. So those who, I'm going to do another sermon or what have you at 10.30 at Edwards Hall. It's 10.30 tonight, okay? Blessings, blessings. Thank you very, very much. God bless.